Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Bay Southern Bell reporting in from my home. Um, I left Virginia yesterday morning, and after spending 12 hours on the road, I finally returned home. And I must say that I am quite uh, enthusiastic to be back in a secure location because after the events of this weekend, I must say it has been incredibly um, exhilarating. It has been incredibly intimidating. It has been one of the most intense and terrifying experiences of my life. And I'm baffled uh, because I expected the mainstream media to distort what actually occurred, but to the degree of not even acknowledging the domestic terrorists, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, the Black Panthers, Black Bloc anarchists, and all the other leftist agitators that were present to this event, to not even discuss those particular groups in the mainstream media for their names to not even come up, but to displace the entirety of the violence and the blame upon the right wing that was present to this event is absolutely atrocious, and it's absolutely disgusting. This has been quite a disheartening experience for me. In fact, even uh, Donald Trump today released a statement in which he vehemently condemned those on the right wing, claiming that they are the KKK, they are neo-Nazis, they are the ones perpetrating this violence. So, the purpose of this video right now, today, is for me to clarify what actually occurred, because the mainstream media certainly is not doing so. And I think you will find that it was not us who instigated this violence. But it was the left, and they are nothing short of domestic terrorists. So let's begin from the start, from the very beginning of how all of this escalated to the point that it is at now. As you know, Jason Kessler, the organizer, organized this rally originally as a response to the censorship of the mainstream media and the federal government of our perspectives. The inherent demonization that is occurring towards whites, towards Europeans, and towards the entirety of the right wing here in the United States. And this was expected to be a demonstration of our constitutional liberties and our civil rights. The ability to enjoy freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of um, expression, and all of these things. And yet, that is the exact opposite of what actually occurred at this event. So Jason Kessler originally organized this event, but Wes Bellamy, the vice mayor of Charlottesville, illegally and unconstitutionally revoked the permit that we had earned for this event. And coincidentally, he is a member of Black Lives Matter and allegedly the Black Panthers also. This should in itself be sufficient to understand why this corruption is the way that it is because even the vice mayor is involved within these domestic terrorist organizations. So it should not come as a surprise that our permit was illegally revoked. However, the ACLU, as many of you know already, decided to legally fight this and oppose this decision. And so they sued Charlottesville for violating the First Amendment, for violating the freedom of speech, of assembly, and of expression. And fortunately, we thought a federal judge had actually sided with us in this event. A federal judge struck down the unconstitutionality of um, the, um, basically the decision that they made to relinquish our permit. A federal judge said that it is within our constitutional rights of assembly, of free speech, and of expression to hold this event. And so I would say that we were rather optimistic at that prospect because we thought, well, perhaps they do understand that we have a constitutional right to be here and to do this event, which we did. But that right was completely and utterly violated. Friday evening, we had the torchlight rally and the march, as most of you know, where we marched throughout the area in the vicinity of the park in Charlottesville to protest the blatant censorship of our heritage, our history, and our honor that has been going on for some time now. But oddly enough, Antifa and Black Lives Matter knew exactly where we were going to be. And as we approached the park in the vicinity of the statue and around that general area, they were waiting on us there. We walked right into a trap, my friends. We were right in the hands of Antifa and Black Lives Matter. 
And as soon as we arrived in the vicinity of that area and were essentially right in the midst of these domestic terrorists, law enforcement demanded that we put our torches out. And so it was that we were forced to do that. And chaos ensued. Absolute chaos ensued. That was an incredibly terrifying experience for me. Because as we left that event, Black Lives Matter and Antifa actually attempted to follow us down the street. And law enforcement actually um, attempted to hold them back. So I will give them props for that. <laughs> they actually... Uh, were on the side of the roads, on both sides of the roads. Black Lives Matter and Antifa were present on both sides of the roads. We were walking on the sidewalk and they were attempting to follow us. But fortunately, we lost them. But the fact that we walked right into the hands of these domestic terrorists shows to me quite evidently and quite clearly that this was a trap. And if that was not sufficient evidence enough, the fact that the Airbnbs that all of my friends had were revoked... The fact that all of our reservations were cancelled. The fact that Expedia cancelled the flight reservations of not only many of my associates, but my best friend, who is an activist from South Africa. Her flight was cancelled and she had to reroute through Richmond in order to get to this event. Because her flight was cancelled. Because all of these corporations, all of these organizations have been working against us. They did everything within their power to stop this from occurring. So we had the Airbnb cancel on us. We had the Expedia um, line cancel on us as well and impede many from being able to attend the event. But if that wasn't sufficient enough, when I got back to my hotel, I realized that Antifa and Black Lives Matter were actually staying at my hotel. From that point on, um, when I was preparing to leave the hotel to go to another location... Antifa actually went outside and took images of my car. They had my license plate and images of my vehicle. It was at this point in time that I was contacted and it was confirmed that I had been doxxed. So I have been doxxed. I was also told that allegedly Black Lives Matter had put a bounty on me for anyone that could take me out. So there's that as well. But all of this had occurred in an attempt to shut down this event, to shut down any opportunity for freedom of speech that we had. Now... Saturday, the event was, of course, going to be planned as normal now that our permit had been reinstated. Now that our permit had been restored by a federal judge, we thought, okay, well, we, you know, we're in a safe zone now because we understand that we do have the constitutional right to freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of expression. We do have those constitutional rights. Those are our civil liberties, and no one can impede upon those liberties. So everything will be fine. So we go to the event, and I go with my own personal security team, as well as my, my best friend. And they herded us into this area like cattle. We were instructed to go through this area into this um, blocked off section of the park. We had a shield wall up to protect us from Antifa and Black Lives Matter, who were protesting directly in front of us. And... So we're there, and everything seems to be going relatively well. More people begin showing up. And it was about 9.30, I would say, and I began observing what was occurring around us. I noticed that the National Guard had actually set up a platform on top of a roof in two different locations um, on either corner of the park. So they were there. But as the time drew near for the speakers to assemble and to begin the actual rally, law enforcement in riot gear arrived on the scene and announced that this was an unlawful assembly. Yes, you heard that correctly. They said that this was an unlawful assembly. There are three points I would like to address with that. First and foremost, we have a constitutional right to assemble. We have a constitutional right to free speech, and we have a constitutional right to freedom of expression. Second of all, it is directly unconstitutional to demand that a permit is required in order to assemble in a public place because of what I just said. It is a civil liberty and a civil right in this country to be able to assemble in a peaceable assembly in order to promote free speech, association, and expression. So this was a direct violation of our constitutional rights. 
Third of all, violence instantly broke out. When they said that we were being forced to evacuate the park, my security team grabbed me and they saw that gas was being popped. Tear gas, um, Antifa was utilizing weapons. At that point, one of my security team uh, threw me a respirator for my own protection and um, we had to grab each other and leave very quickly. Law enforcement herded us into this area like cattle where we were trapped and surrounded by Antifa. And when we were leaving, we were forced to exit through the hordes of Antifa and Black Lives Matter that had gathered. Several of my friends and acquaintances were severely injured during this event. Several of them were assaulted with steel pipes, with mace and bear mace. Baked Alaska was attacked with acid. As a result, he could possibly be permanently blinded. Bricks were being thrown at us. It was absolutely atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. But what did law enforcement do about this? Not a damn thing. They stood by and watched as we were forced to physically confront these domestic terrorists in Antifa and Black Lives Matter. They stood by and said that we will forcibly remove you if you do not comply. If you do not leave this unlawful assembly, we will force you to leave. And so we were forced into these hordes of Black Lives Matter of Antifa. Where violence inevitably broke out. Where several of my friends were injured. Where one man was blinded. Where several received concussions and head trauma. We evacuated the area as fast as possible. But when we eventually reached our vehicles, Black Lives Matter and Antifa were waiting on us in the parking lot. An entire horde of them were there waiting on us. But this is not even the most atrocious part. What is atrocious is the fact that police in riot gear had blocked off the other section of the parking lot. We were trapped and we were herded together like cattle. What does this indicate to us? This indicates to me that this was a setup. That the federal government, that the vice mayor, that Black Lives Matter and Antifa are all in cahoots. That they work together in order to stop this expression of free speech and assembly. To instigate violence. To falsely slander us as being Nazis, as being neo-Nazis and fascists. As being terrorists. We had visual documentation confirming that Black Lives Matter and Antifa were physically assaulting our people. They are the ones that instigated this entire ordeal. They are the ones that were lighting things on fire and attempting to light us on fire. They were throwing their urine at us. They were throwing bricks at us and assaulting our people with steel pipes. They are the ones that were instigating this. But I can guarantee you that you will not hear that from any mainstream media source. Why? Because the entire country is painting us as neo-Nazis. They're painting us as terrorists. When we were there for one purpose. To stand in solidarity against communism, against leftism, against the censorship of our freedom of association, freedom of assembly, and freedom of speech. But this was absolutely obstructed. Law enforcement stood by. Because they were given a stand-down order, as confirmed by the ACLU. Law enforcement was given a stand-down order to not engage, but to simply manipulate us into physical confrontation with these domestic terrorists on the left. The federal government exists for one reason, as outlined within the Constitution, and that is to protect our civil liberties, to protect our civil rights and to protect our freedom of autonomy, of expression, of speech, and of assembly. That is the reason the federal government exists in the first place. So how is it that the federal government has done the diametric opposite of this, has directly targeted us, has painted us as domestic terrorists, and yet the entire media has completely blacked out what actually occurred? It has blacked out the fact that the left was actually using homemade flamethrowers attempting to set us on fire. They were throwing bricks at our people. They were assaulting our men with steel pipes. Several of them received concussions as a result of that, but they're not concerned with that.
They're only concerned with the fact that one of these individuals on the left perished in that car accident, right? But what they have not acknowledged is that prior to that incident occurring, the leftists were attacking vehicles with baseball bats. That's what they're not discussing. They're not discussing that any of this was instigated by the left. It was at that point that the state of Virginia had declared a state of emergency. National Guard moved in and began illegally arresting people, particularly on our side. But the mainstream media is insisting that all of this is the result of neo-Nazis, of the KKK, of fascists. This is the demonstration of communism in this country my friends. This is the demonstration of totalitarianism, if we have ever seen it in this country. This is a direct violation of our civil liberties and our civil rights. To paint us as the criminals, to paint us as the ones that are meant to be demonized in this situation, to paint us as these evil terrorists, these evil neo-Nazis, when we were being surrounded, herded like cattle, and attacked by these domestic terrorists. Not a single mainstream media source will tell you what has actually happened. And for the record, I have pictures, visual, and audio documentation of everything that I have said in this video thus far and everything that I will continue to say from this point forward. Everything that I'm telling you can be proved with documentation and I will be happy to provide that for anyone who is suspicious about what I am saying here. We were absolutely surrounded by Black Lives Matter and by Antifa. These people came with the intention to disrupt our free speech rally, to instigate violence, to kill. Several of ours received concussions. One man has been permanently blinded. But we deserve that because we're evil neo-Nazis, right? Since this has occurred, however, there have been riots that have broken out all over the country. There has been riots in Seattle, Washington, in Richmond, Virginia, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Greenville, South Carolina, and in Tampa, Florida. Riots have broken out all over the country as a result of this. And they stand in solidarity against fascism, they say, because this is an example of white supremacy. Apparently, our people being assaulted, blinded, maced, hit over the head with steel pipes, terrorized, surrounded in their vehicles, assaulted with all types of instruments and weapons. This is a demonstration of white supremacy. It is white supremacy to want to preserve one's heritage, one's honor, one's history, and one's people. This is white supremacy. It is white supremacy to be incapable of holding a free speech rally to demonstrate our civil liberties and constitutional rights. That's white supremacy. It's white supremacy to go to this event and be protested to such a degree that the entirety of the event was shut down. To have law enforcement and the federal government conspire against us to plan this. It's happening all over the country right now, my friends. In Tampa, the Confederate monument there was vandalized last night. They spray painted fuck fascism all over it. An enormous protest against Richard Spencer is being organized right now at the University of Florida. As was reported earlier today, over 1,600 people are anticipated to attend this event. My friends are receiving messages from Black Lives Matter and Antifa, being intimidated, being threatened, being doxxed, being called neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and fascists for attending this event. Because saying that we will not be replaced, saying that we will not cease to fight for our people, our heritage, and our honor, and our history is white supremacist. The mayor of Lexington, Kentucky has announced that the events in Charlottesville, particularly the violence, will serve as a catalyst for the removal of their Confederate monuments. 
There's a Twitter account entitled, Yes, You're Racist, that is openly doxing our people. Two have been confirmed to lose their jobs as a result of the events of this weekend. We're being threatened. I have personally been threatened. I have been doxxed. I have been um, allegedly um, placed upon a bounty by Black Lives Matter. Antifa has targeted my friends and I. My friends, this is the beginning of white genocide. There are three steps of white genocide, three phases that we can witness in the, in the world right now. The first is what we are seeing in the United States right now. It is the censorship of our history. It is the destruction of our monuments. It is the annihilation of our memories. This is the first step of replacing a people, of annihilating a people. You destroy their history, their heritage, and their honor. You censor it because it's politically incorrect. The second step is what we're seeing in various countries in Europe right now. In Sweden, in Germany, in France, it is mass replacement through mass immigration. This is the second step to white genocide. You replace the people. You condemn them for not accepting those that are unlike them, and you force multiculturalism into their societies. This is the second step of white genocide. The third step is what we are witnessing in South Africa right now. It is the explicit annihilation and genocide of an entire demographic. It is the destruction and the annihilation of an entire people. My friend, Vanessa Carlisle, who attended this event with me, is an activist from South Africa. And she has told me on numerous occasions, this is how it began there. This is the beginning of white genocide, my friends. Over 70,000 whites have been slaughtered in South Africa since 2007, and we have that number only because they stopped counting after 70,000. They are being openly slaughtered there. Vanessa's uncle was killed. Her grandmother was robbed. Her cousin was raped in South Africa. The reality there is explicit white genocide. And we're seeing the beginning of it right here, right now in this country. This is the essence of communism. This is the essence of totalitarianism. This is terrorism, my friends. This is how it began in South Africa, with the censorship of their people, with the destruction of their monuments, and the annihilation of their history. This is how it begins. And if we do not stop it now, it will continue, and it will continue until we reach the level that we are witnessing in South Africa right now. It will continue with the censorship until it gets to mass replacement. And when it gets to mass replacement... Enforced multiculturalism has cultivated generations of violent individuals in an unstable society. We will advance to the third stage, which is what we are seeing in South Africa right now, with whites being openly executed, with them being openly annihilated. These are the three steps of white genocide. We are in phase one right now, my friends. In this country, our constitutional rights have been thrown away. They are considered secondary to the rights of the politically correct, to the left, to liberals, to those who oppose us, to those who want to impose cultural Marxism upon this country. Our rights are nothing because we are white, because we are European. We have no constitutional rights in this country anymore, according to the federal government. They gave law enforcement a stand-down order and forced us to physically confront Antifa and Black Lives Matter. They wanted this to occur. This was an absolute setup. Every single bit of this event was a setup. It was a manipulation so that we could all be targeted in one place. So that all of the individuals, the speakers, and the political activists that they despised the most were located in this one place. And we could all be attacked and targeted. When I was in the parking lot, heading to our car, and we walked around the corner, 
And Black Lives Matter had completely surrounded our vehicles. That was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. That was one of the most horrendous things I have ever had the misfortune to witness. And law enforcement did what? They stood by on the other end of the parking lot and blocked us off so that we were forced to walk through these domestic terrorists in order to reach our vehicles. We were stalked, we were doxxed, we were assaulted, we were attacked, we were intimidated by Black Lives Matter and by Antifa and these leftist agitators. And I hold no reservations in calling them exactly what they are. They are nothing short of domestic terrorists. These riots are breaking out nationwide all over the country right now. All over the fucking country right now. They're destroying our monuments. They want to erase our history and annihilate our people. This is step one to white genocide, my friends. It has to stop now. Before it is too late to stop it at all. It has to stop now. I'll be writing an article this evening recounting the events of this um, incident. I will be interviewing multiple people that were present at this rally and getting their different perspectives on this as well as documenting injuries and I will also have pictures and visual and audio documentation in that article of what occurred. I will be posting that as soon as I finish it but it will likely take a few hours to do so and that is the reason why I wanted to go ahead and make this video and, and discuss and clarify what actually happened at this event because the mainstream media is certainly not accurate in the least. What they are saying about us is entirely erroneous. We are not neo-Nazis. I am no neo-Nazi. I am no fascist. I am not a bigot or any of these other emotionally charged accusations that they are painting us as. Neither are my friends. We were there for one reason and one reason only, and that reason was to preserve our freedom of speech, of assembly, of autonomy, and of expression. To defend our civil liberties against communism. That's why we were at this event. And it was shut down by individuals openly advocating for communism. Jason Kessler attempted to hold a press conference yesterday morning after the events of Saturday in which he was again shut down. He was surrounded by a mob of Antifa and he was punched in the face and violently assaulted and law enforcement did nothing. The federal government, law enforcement, National Guard, Antifa, and Black Lives Matter were all present and they were working together against all of us. Law enforcement and the federal government and the local government are responsible for this atrocity. They want to look at us and say that it is our fault that individuals were murdered at this thing. Don't look at the individuals instigating the violence. Don't look at the individuals who refused to allow us to have a peaceful assembly. Look at the individuals who were just there to express their freedom of speech. They're the ones responsible. No, let me tell you who's responsible. Black Lives Matter is responsible. Antifa is responsible. The federal government and the local government, West Bellamy, is responsible. The liberal left is responsible. If you want to know whose fault it is, is this violence occurred? Look at those who refuse to allow us to have an expression of free speech and assembly in peace. After Jason Kessler had to leave the press conference yesterday morning, a group of leftists went up to the microphone and began talking about instigating a communist revolution in this country. They're no longer even concerned with hiding the fact that they are communists. They openly advocate communism in this country. They openly advocate the destruction of our civil rights and liberties. They openly advocate the destruction of the Constitution and the basis of our republic. But that's all right. Because we're evil white supremacists. Going to an event to express your freedom of speech and assembly makes you a white supremacist in their eyes.
This entire event has been absolutely disgusting, and I'm honestly still in shock from it, from everything that happened. Because I did not expect for us to be betrayed to the extent that we were. Law enforcement allegedly was actually cooperative with us up until the actual event began. Until the actual rallies had been planned and solidified until we were there. And then they turned against us and attempted to subvert us and destroy us by forcing us into direct confrontation with these leftist agitators and terrorists. This, my friends, is what actually happened at this rally. This is what actually occurred. What you are seeing on the mainstream media right now on virtually every major news source right now about the neo-Nazis, the fascists, and the white supremacists that are instigating all of this violence. They refuse to talk about the fact that the left was attempting to set us on fire. They refuse to talk about the fact that Blake Alaska, one of the speakers who was going to be there, is blinded because he had acid thrown into his eyes. They refuse to talk about the fact that Black Lives Matter was attacking our vehicles with baseball bats. But that doesn't matter because that doesn't fit the narrative. But I'm fully aware of what happened because I was there. And I have no intention of staying silent on this. I will not stay silent on this and stand by while the federal government and the local governments are cooperating with communists and shutting down free speech and assembly. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and finish this video. This ended up being longer than I had originally anticipated. But I needed to outline and discuss the circumstances at hand because the lies that the federal government and the media are spreading about this is absolutely erroneous. It's a manipulation of what actually happened. And I know what happened because I was there and saw it with my own eyes, as did my friends and acquaintances who were also there. So I'm going to be working on an article about this today, all day, because I will be using various interviews with my brothers and my sisters who were involved in this thing, those who were physically assaulted and attacked by Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Their testimonies will be present. Uh, visual and audio documentation will be included in this article. When I am done, there will be no denial of what actually happened. We will not allow the federal government and the mainstream media to distort what actually happened. We will not allow them to silence us. Because at this point, we are the only ones remaining for free speech and assembly. We are the only ones remaining for the Constitution. It is up to us to bear that torch and to preserve it against those who would destroy it. I will inform everyone of when this article is completed. And if you have any uh, personal um, experience of the rally and you were present at this event and you have um, a testimony that you would like to be included in this article, feel free to contact me, private message me about it, and I will be working on this later today. But in the meantime, I ask that you all share this video so that we can get it into circulation so that everyone can be aware of what actually occurred at this rally so that the, the distortion of what the mainstream media has made this out to be can be absolutely shattered. But in the meantime, I ask just that you all help me circulate this thing and uh, get the word out there to what actually occurred so that we can break this um, deception of the mainstream media and what is occurring right now. So on that note, I'm about to go work on this article. I'll post that later this evening, and I hope that you all have a wonderful day.